Hello everyone, we hope you're all doing very well. It's time for the second video in our new series of how can you be a modern US carrier group, something that is for all intents and purposes regarded as unkillable. Your two suggestions today are, since you're trying to have all 40 shipwrecks from the two battlecruisers launch alone, and it appears each ship only has four launches at the same time due to the DCS Bogachev code, why not just use 10 Kirovs to shoot four missiles each. I know it breaks the two ship rule you have put in place, but it will also allow you to test the true onslaught of two carriers versus a carrier fleet. Okay, that needs explaining. So we did try battle cruisers, realistic Russian battle cruisers, two of them against the modern carrier group, and it failed. And the main reason it failed is that the carrier killing battle cruisers in DCS don't fire their missiles realistically as if they would do in real life. In real life, they knew that they would have to get past the Aegis defense network of the modern carrier group, so they would fire all of their missiles at once and they would fire them intelligently and the missiles would talk to each other and data link to each other. None of that is modeled in DCS, it's just not that highly modeled in terms of naval assets. So we're going to fake it. Rather than having just two battle cruisers, we're now going to have 10. Now, that's not at all realistic. And we know that because there are literally only four carrier killing battle cruisers in the Russian Navy. But to represent how powerful just two of them could be, we're going to use 10 to simulate the firepower that they could actually put out, we believe. Let's go and have a look at uh, these naval assets. So these are the most up-to-date Google images of the actual four carrier-killing Kirov-class battlecruisers in the Russian Navy. So we've got this one here. This is the Admiral Lazarev. You can see the VLS suite there where the missiles are going to come off. Absolutely massive vessel. Next, we have two Kirov battlecruisers in this picture. We've got the first here which I believe is going to be the Admiral Yushakov. I'm not sure what this thing is beside it. It's like a massive submarine, maybe. It is. It is. There's a, there's a conning tower. Look. Wow. Enormous submarine. Unbelievable. There. And if we went down here into dry dock, we can see ba, 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 the Admiral Nikimov. I think I've got that the right way around. Refitting in dry dock. What a massive operation that must be. And finally, we've got Peter the Great. Um, and look at this place. Look at all of these ships here. And the cool thing is we can see lovely example of a Kirov there. That's Peter the Great. And we think that is the Moskova. I feel like a CIA spy. I know it's Google Earth and everyone can see it. But I feel a bit like a CIA spy, I'll see. That's, I think, the Moskova cruiser there, which is really interesting. Uh, another submarine there. And that will be... Um, Oyster Shimi? No. Don't know what that's going to be. Something cool. Let's now have a look at that armament. We're talking P-700 Granite, or the Shipwreck. It's a long-range cruise missile. Can be submarine launched or ship launched. In service since 1983 under the Soviet Union. Produced from 85 to 92. Seven metric tons in weight. Very big, very expensive. 33 feet in length. Can be high explosive or nuclear. High explosive is going to be 750 kilos, 1650 pounds. Engine is turbojet and probable ramjet. Operational range, just under 400 miles. Speed, Mach 2.5 plus, high altitude, 1.6 low altitude. Guidance is INS with active radar terminal and home on jam and satellite targeting system. And you can see we're firing from the Kirov battlecruiser. That sums up the first operation. On to the second operation. Could you try a mass TU-22 M3 backfire strike overwhelming the group with the mighty KH-22 anti-ship missiles similar to the way they are supposed to be implemented? Backfire is a mighty air-to-ground aircraft with anti-shipping ability. It can carry up to three massive KH-22 AS-4 kitchen missiles. These are older missiles produced 1962 under the Soviet Union. The lighter at 5.8 metric tons, longer at 38 feet. They're basically as big as a F-18 Hornet or something. The conventional warhead is going to be 2,200 pounds of RDX explosive. It's a liquid-fueled rocket, which is interesting. This means that it can go very high, of course. It's not an air breather. Operational range, 320 nautical miles. It can go up to 27 kilometers or 90,000 feet, so SR-71 spec. And it is pretty much hypersonic at Mach 4.6 and it is going to rely on its speed as its defense from being shot down. It's an older missile. There's no satellite technology here. It is INS guided with active radar homing for the last few miles. 
can be sent by TU22, M, K, or a bear. Welcome to DCS. We're using our standard realistic model for the US carrier group. It's spread 15 miles by 15 miles thereabouts. It has aircraft in the air already for intercept with AWACS. And we won't go any further today. It's just the same one we've been using. Attacking it today are 10 Kirovs. We've not put them in a realistic formation because the 10 don't even exist. There's no point of trying to be realistic. But their firepower, in theory, should be realistic. Let's go and see the boom boom. Now, we haven't tried this yet, so we're not sure how it's going to go, but seems that some of the ships are falling out of formation just slightly worrying but oh there we go shipwrecks out look at that so as we think there were more or less fire fire in real life we've got kind of five out per uh, equivalent ship and they're probably going to fire more maybe a close-up of this vls here sadly these are the old kind of 20 year old low polygon models but suck it up you see the captain's ordering some. There we go. Look at that. Now, in real life, these missiles are relatively intelligent missiles in that, for instance, one will go high and almost be like a, a, a data link master and control the others. So they will be talking to each other. And DCS is not like that. They're dumb. Each missile is just a single missile. It goes up on its own and does its own thing. Also, in real life, I think they have the option of going high or low. In DCS, we believe these, these can only go low and will essentially be sea skimming. So that's 10, 20, 30, and probably going to be 40 if we speed that up. Missiles going up all at once. Okay, so that's four missiles in the air within uh, 70 seconds. So that's not bad. That's very hard to shoot down. Nearly a thousand knots. In terms of power, that's what, 40 tonnes of RDX going up. They've got a distance of uh, about 100 nautical miles to cover. They can fire about four times that distance, but, you know, we'll be here all day waiting for that. Let's see when the first defences go up, because they're low level. And I wonder if in real life the F-14s have taken off. I wonder if in real life the F-14s would go and shoot these down with their Phoenixes. I would expect that they probably would go and try that, because the later Phoenixes, of course, were designed for that, but... Let me know your thoughts on that. 50 miles out, 40 miles out, 30 miles out. Uh, the first SM2s were out at just under 30 miles. So probably, I'm guessing, the AWACS has spotted them. Fed that back to the via Link 16, and now the ships are firing. Okay, let's see. So they're firing the SM2, which is the, it's the standard highest spec missile we have for these in DCS in the US. In real life, I think they now have SM6 operating, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay, here we go. Uh, curvature of the Earth, not modelled in DCS in terms of visuals, so you can see the carrier. Of course, we couldn't do that in real life. But the whole idea of this attack is we've got so many vampires in the air that we're going to overwhelm the Aegis, although it doesn't look like we're going to overwhelm them from what's happening here. They are going to get taken down, aren't they? This is the quickest I can get them to fire together. I can't get there any more missiles in the air any quicker than this, so this is the best we're ever going to get. Unless we've got like 20 uh, ships, but you're getting really stupid at that point. Uh, it's not going to work. Not going to work, RC. I'm getting no. shot down. That Aegis, as as those the, SM2s uh, are just too good. As long as the carrier group has enough missiles. Well, yeah. I mean, that's four, at least 40 missiles. They do. So. Uh, look at the SM2s going out. It's so impressive to see it. I mean, it doesn't look impressive if I went and f 9 on them, because they're so far apart now, to be realistic, at 15 miles apart, barely see each other, but... The idea of how this... Mm, these guys are getting a bit close, actually. Yeah, they keep... We're, oh, we've got in the fleet. We've got... Oh, we've got within the first cruiser, almost. In fact, guns are being fired. On this guy here. We've passed the first cruisers. But because these vessels are so spread out... We've still got, you know, 10 miles to go, nearly, to hit the carrier. I think we're going to make it. Only yeah, one of these no, will probably put the carrier out of action. Oh, so close. It's not right all of a sudden. Like, it shouldn't have done that. Sea Wizards shooting them down. 
got some movement in the missiles within maybe five miles of the carrier we're gonna get through rolling the rams are out oh my god i really didn't expect that oh boom we've got an impact on the carrier i'm gonna pause there wow we've got a missile through and that is of course how a russian attack is supposed to work you might have put just so many radar blips on the screen that you're going to have problems even ages you're going to have problems missiles going for the same target and eventually and you see because these warheads are so big that there is a nuclear powered you know basically the biggest combat ship in the water i think a supercarrier is now at unworkable health basically it's 40 percent damaged i know he doesn't look very damaged there but he is. He's on fire in many places. A £2,000 bomb just hit it. Uh, let's see if any more get through. We've still got 10 on the way. How interesting. Stand it's like by. they were shooting him down. All of a sudden, they couldn't shoot him anymore. Yeah, it does feel like that, doesn't it? It's, 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 it's almost like yeah. they've got in a zone where it says, ah, cannot compute. Right. It's almost like, like they were getting close, but then they were exploding around him. That's something's odd. With that. Almost seems to be this the zone. Logic zone where I guess there's some confusion happens. Yeah. Look there. They're all there. None got through. None got through. Oh, Jesus. An SM2 almost hit itself. That's it, guys. That is 40 missiles fired in the space of a minute. That's the best we're going to do. And one got through. And it depends if you want to sink the carrier or, or damage it enough. That there would probably stop the carrier operating, I would imagine, if two thousands of pounds of, of RDX exploded from the inside out, as it probably would with a de delayed fuse. It's basically a non-operating carrier group. So it worked. They, I was firing another rally now, but um, that's, that was not supposed to be in the simulation. Remember, we're trying to simulate two Kirovs. Before we move on to the backfires, anything you want to add to that RC? Nope. Welcome back. You join us as we have a flight of Tu-22s, incredibly sexy aircraft, as you can see. Each has three times anti-shipping missiles. Oh look, you can see our Kirovs there sailing into each other. These are actually much older missiles. Liquid fuel. The cool thing about that is they can go really high. These are pretty much hypersonic, a Mac 4.5, 4.6. I wonder if they're ballistic. I'm not sure what qualifies something to be a ballistic missile. But because they're going to go high and dive down from the top, I think that qualifies it for a ballistic missile. Aha, missiles away. Boom. Look at those monsters. Another three. There they go. Mega impressive. There's nothing unimpressive. Look at them go to space. Oh, look at them. Wow. That is simply awesome. They're going way up there. They are. That is something cool. 30,000 feet. We're literally going to go over the F-18s. Again, could Phoenixes intercept these? Hypersonics? Really don't know. Okay, 50,000 feet, the top ones have leveled out, 60,000 feet, 2,000 knots, that's some cool programming, look at that, okay we've topped out at 80,000 feet, smoke's disappeared, Maybe the engines have even cut. Yes, the engines are cut. Why? Right, they are just ballistic now. They are just big, very big dropping darts. How interesting. Okay, 50 miles. Oh, and it's all kicked off. The F-18s are intercepting the SM-2s, which just seem unbeatable. 90,000 feet, these SM-2s. Which is interesting, because I've read that the SM-2 ceilings are 89,000 feet. But... They just stretched it a bit. Stretched a bit. Yeah, I, I may be wrong as well. Uh, but um, well, actually, I think they have stretched it a bit because they're still 2,300 knots at 90,000 feet. But okay, fine. We'll let, we'll let them have it, honestly. I think they're still on burn as well. God, look at that sight. I mean, let me just try and get a shot at the ships. Again, these are all really spread out. See, so it won't look impressive like a GR. No, it won't. It just doesn't, you know, a realistic one just doesn't look impressive. They're just so far apart. You know, in our movies, we like to squeeze them up because so it actually looks good. 
Uh, right, I guess we're going to see what happens here. I get the feeling they're just going to be plucked from the air. Personally, I think those SM2s are way overpowered from what I've read, but again, absolutely no expert. The only thing these have got on their side... Oh, missed! Now here's the problem. To intercept something that's essentially hypersonic uh, is very hard thing to do, as you all know from you know any readings. So, yeah, they've got a chance of getting through. I can see little blips of SM2s just dropping past the screen, missing. Exactly that reason. Another one just dropped by. It's gonna have oh, we lost one, and it happened so quickly. It was like two frames of animation. Wow. Okay. Wow. Look at it now. Zap, 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 zap. No, destroyed. Destroy how it took two out in one. Look at that. The immense force of. Uh, Carrier Group SM2s. Okay, that didn't work. I didn't get anywhere near. Let's double up, uh, no, let's triple up the amount of backfires. I don't see why Russia couldn't organize nine backfires with, what, 27 missiles? Welcome back. We've now got nine of these monsters. Personally, I think it's unlikely that they would use this many, but. Now, in reality, you might argue that they will attack from different angles to help fool the uh, systems, and that may be true, and we are going to be doing that in another uh, session, but in this session, we want everything coming from one angle. Let's just take this one step at a time. Yowza. That's always impressive. Right, it's 27 RC. Oh, look at them go up. Look at them go up. They're all together as well. I love it how they just go into the hyperspace up there. Amazing. Barrage has started, it's going to be about 50 miles, no, about 60 miles the barrage started, so they're very easy to spot on the radar. F-18s appear to be going for them as well, but they've got not much chance to intercept a hypersonic thing at 80,000 feet. Right, so it's just, to, you know, amount of vampires in the air now, and let's see how we get through this barrage of SM-2s. Let's see what it looks like from the SM-2 view. Oh, look at that, they're diving down on them like phoenixes, how interesting. Oh, there they are, here they come. Ah! Wow. Yeah, they just dive down on top of them. And that's a very difficult intercept to dive down on. You know how hard it is in a World War II plane to intercept a bomber from above. It's almost so hard. Now imagine doing that when one thing's moving at Mach 4.6. And you've not got much air to manoeuvre in. Your fins aren't making, you know. I don't think those s are back to thrust when they're not burning anyway. But they're doing an amazing job, though. Would they be this good in real life? I don't suppose anyone would really know, but... Yeah, they're doing an amazing job, look. One's getting a little cut. Oh, spoke too soon. Here they go. 40,000 feet. It's all about getting there as quickly as possible. Dive, dive, dive. Board zinked. Board zinked. Here they come. SM2's coming. Oh, we're losing our speed. That was a big advantage. Oh, no. This is problematic at best, RC. 20,000 feet. Left, three. Four, four left, 20,000 feet, 18,000 feet, 15,000 feet. Come on, I want them to go. No, there's one left. No, no. Oh, there you go. That was 27 
simultaneously essentially fired uh, not kitchens, what are they called? Yes, they are. The, these are the kitchens. Yeah, the kitchens. Ballistic hypersonic missiles and the carrier fleet could intercept them. The Aegis is that good, at least in game. I don't think you're going to have more than, uh, I don't think you can have more than nine simultaneously firing TU nine, uh, TU-22s. I think that would be getting a bit silly. Uh, we will test if they're coming from multiple angles, but that'll be a different video. That's it. So, shipwrecks do work just by the skin of their teeth. Kitchens, not so much. How? Anything to add, RC? Nothing to add. Bye.